Hello friends and history lovers, this is JM History. So two days ago the creators of upcoming movie Medieval released a short clip rambling about how accurate the clothing and armor is in their movie. You can probably already tell that Czech Renekton community was in disbelief. Now, if you are a Renekter yourself, you probably already made your opinion on the matter. But for those viewers who are not familiar with medieval life, I will try to explain briefly why the director of medieval is oh so wrong and what could have been done better. Já jsem strašně chtěl, aby zbroj, oblečení z té doby bylo co, co nejpřesnější, ale zároveň, aby byla zajímavá, aby to vypadalo jako hezky, atraktivně pro film. So the director Mr. Jakl is saying, I wanted the costumes and the armor to be as accurate as possible, while also looking attractive and appealing in the movie. I'm sorry I have to say, but this claim is just a big middle finger towards Renekman community, which was from the day the creators released first pictures from the movie set, telling the directors that no, this is not how early 15th century people dressed like and armored themselves like. We see that the director went for the 1990s Hollywood standard look of medieval movies, with lots of leather, fur, random metal pieces over body, completely out of period armor, and everything is also toned down to grim dark brown dark blue colors, because obviously world did not have colors until color TV was invented. So how do we know how people dressed in the medieval times? Because we have evidence, we have pictures and paintings. We have other depictions like statues, carvings, decorated tiles, tombstone, effigies. We have written sources and we also have archaeological findings of exact original clothes and other objects. In the background I'm showing you those examples which are from the Jan Zizkas period. And they look nothing like the movie. If you wanted to make the costumes and armor attractive, you did not have to go so far. I think that the 15th century fashion, the early 15th century fashion, is already pretty appealing. People wore colors, uh, people wanted to show off. The armor was interesting. So, why do... just why? Otázka helm při boji ve středověku, já myslím, že se většinou bojovalo bez helm. Už z toho důvodu, že ta helma byla nákladná a že do každého boje v každém počasí se prostě nehodí. So Mr. Čechura is claiming, I think most of the times people fought without helmets, because helmet was expensive and was not fit for every fight and every type of weather. Okay, this claim is pretty wrong. I'm not saying completely wrong, because yes, we do have records that people fought without helmets, but it is the same type of argument like if we would say that most people in Europe do not have cell phones. Yes, there are some that don't, but majority has. But for the majority of cases, people would wear helmet if they could. And yes, they were examples of very expensive helmets made for and worn by rich nobility. But we also have examples of poor, munitions quality helmets bashed together in single day and screw the comfort of the wearer. They were city laws in Europe stating how many pieces of armor must be stored in city armories. And we have accounting records of armor numbers. Head protection was an essential from the ancient times to the modern times, with slight exception in the Napoleonic era, when guns got so powerful that wearing armor was basically pointless. But in the 15th century, helmet could very much save your life, and you would wear it whenever possible. And about the weather thing, yes, iron rusts, but that's why people took care of it. Beeswax, plant oil and armor polishing was well known. French knight at Agincourt went into battle in his armor, not worrying about the rainy weather, but his personal protection. When going into battle, Worrying about your armor rusting is probably one of the last things you worry about. 
And I am dangerously dancing on the nice edge of ad hominem argument here, but Mr. Chechura is a historian, but his focus is on economy and social reality in the medieval era. I browsed his work and I cannot exactly find any paper about medieval armor. Sorry, but it's the same principle when dentist is claiming something about COVID-19 virus. Yes, technically he is a doctor, but viruses are not his field of expertise. And I probably don't want my teeth done by virologists or a pathologist. V podstatě jsme vybrali věci, které v té době byly a dávali se dohromady právě třeba pro ty žoldáky tak, že jednoduše, když někde někoho zabili, tak si v podstatě část jeho zbroje vzali nebo část v oblečení. To se dělo běžně. So Mr. Jackal says, we selected things that existed in the era. For example, the garments and armor for the mercenaries was made in such a way that if one got killed, other took his armor or clothing and used it. That commonly happened. I already addressed the claim about how unhistorical the clothing and armor in the movie are. About taking the armor from the dead, yes, that happened. Metal was a valuable resource and armies did strip armor from the dead, either to wear it for themselves, sell it so they could buy other stuff or recycle it for something else. Plno věcí si vyráběli, potom samozřejmě tím, že jsou z různých zemí ty žoldáci, tak používali zbraně, které jsou typické pro ty země. Mr. Director says, people also made stuff on their own. I am okay with this claim to the certain level. Yes, most of the people were probably able to make basic items, but in the medieval era, specialization was already a thing. We know this because we have records from cities counting how many artisans of a kind were present in the city, how many bakers, blacksmiths, leather workers, armorers, weaponsmiths did work in the certain city. The guilds were already present and they were setting kind of industry standards. And in this scene we see a guy sharpening a stick. Not exactly example of the best weaponsmith of the era. He probably lost his weapon and it making an emergency sharp stick. Když jsme přemýšleli o Žižkovi, tak jsem dohledával všechny možné zbraně, které se v té době používaly. Má ještě vlastně kratší zubatý meč, což byl meč používaný na lámání mečů. Ten se používal v té době. Mr. Director says, while we were thinking about Žižka, I was searching for the period weapons. So he has this sword breaker salt that was used to break the swords. It was used in this era. Sword breakers were a thing, but about a hundred or so years later, and they were intended as defense against thin bladed weapons like rapiers. We already covered this. Also, contrary to what the name suggests, sword breakers were not able to break the swords in a literal sense. Swords are hard to break. They were forged with flexible core so they could flex and withstand the forces of the impact. Therefore, it was really hard to actually break them. Certainly not with just the power of your single hand transferred through the blade of Swordbreaker. Swordbreakers are more correctly called parrying daggers and are intended to catch the blade of the opponent, therefore breaking his ability to use the sword. Dokonce v té době existovaly takové příručky, které ukazují různé zbraně a byli byste překvapeni, že tam nacházíme něco jako zárodek tanku. Mr. Chechura is saying, in the time there were manuals that showed all kinds of weapons. And you would be surprised to even find an early roots of a tank. What is Mr. Chechura probably referring to is manuscript Billy Fortis. Yes, this manuscript shows all kinds of different weapons and technologies, some more exotic than the others, like ideas for telescopic siege towers or underwater breathing apparatus. Thing is, if we don't have a cross-source reference, we can't exactly tell if such a thing existed, or if it was just an imagination of the author. Leonardo da Vinci also drew a lot of ideas, but only some of them are functional in reality. So that are all the important claims of the creators of the movie Medieval that I wanted to address. Once again, 
I am not judging the quality of the actor's story, etc. But if the director claims that his movie is historical, that he searched for the most authentic clothes and armor, and his movie is the most expensive movie in the Czech film industry history, he must be ready for the scrutiny of people who have understanding in the field. And unfortunately, the costume authenticity just really sucks. And I'm asking why. Why did the director decide to go this completely unscientific way of making stuff up? Movies like The Outlaw King shown that you don't need tons of black leather and fur on the shoulders for a medieval look. Movie was praised for attention to detail and a very realistic depiction of the period. And what is yet more baffling is that the director could know better. We have historians, we have books, we have all kinds of source materials and we have a great Hussites period reenactment community which was offering advice and help. But Petr Jakl did not listen. I hope you enjoy this video and that it helped to make some things clear for the viewers. I personally have this feeling of lost opportunity. And it's not only about this. People will see this movie and they will think this must be real. And then some of them will come to reenactment events as visitors and they will start asking questions. Why we don't look like the movie? Where is all the leather? Why are we completely inappropriately dressed? And it's just seeding these misconceptions about medieval era. Misconceptions that we have to, again and again, root out. Thank you very much for watching, take care and I will see you next time.